Petersburg. He's going to tell us about the problems and uh, prospects of vaccine prevention of flu in the cross-section of evolution virology. Great thanks to the organizational committee and the organizers of this uh, event. The problems we're discussing today in evolutionary virology, uh, but in a very specific aspect of uh, vaccine prevention of flu. And by the way, on Sunday, even the Sunday, the white nights uh, of St. Petersburg uh, are not a hurdle to the uh, white nights uh, symposium. Uh, on Friday, we've been 45 years old. Our institute is dealing with many interesting things. And uh, with the results of the school of the professor Andrei Kozlov, you already got acquainted. And there will be another presentation a bit later. The topicality of the flu is well known. Just a reminder, starting from this year, based of uh, a general assembly, flu pandemics uh, uh, listed uh, number three. Vaccine prevention was uh, uh, discussed already, and you see uh, WHO uh, singles out this uh, uh, anti-vaccine. Uh, aspect, which is uh, highly topical. In order to understand the evolutionary virology, I would like to say a few words from history. In fact, for more than 100 years passed from the time of the first pandemics, but the issue hasn't been resolved. Besides, the virus was isolated much later after the first pandemics and the first vaccine was uh, uh, created in 1931, almost 90 years ago. But in spite of the vaccines, the problem of flu hasn't been resolved. One of the reasons for that is the variability of the virus. And here we come close to the evolutionary virology. Maybe there's a prism through which we have to consider uh, combating flu in order to change the situation cardinally. As for Spanish flu, it is unfortunately one or had been 100 years old, and there were many publications dedicated to it. Professor в мощном обзоре просто сказал, как это было на самом деле. А на самом деле это была одна из самых больших ошибок, ну или провалов медицинской науки в 20 веке. И, конечно же, нам хочется. In the 20th century, we don't want for these mistakes to be repeated, the ones which were made in the 20th century. Uh, but actually, uh, swine flu and other things uh, show some uh, repetitions of that. 20th century has three pandemonics apart from uh, Spanish flu. It was Asian, Hrip, and Kong, Hong Kong flu as well. And 1973, uh, since 1973. Uh, it was more than 50 years ago. The international system of HU, uh, WHO guidelines are in place for vaccines. No story, 1997, bird flu, then swine flu, another H7N9, uh, and maybe uh, H1N2 uh, in uh, 2018, and some other events might uh, develop which might drastically reverse the situation. By the jubilee of this journal, WHO made such a picture here, seven major uh, threats jeopardizing uh, um, uh, mankind, Ebola and coronavirus, it's flu of different types, bird flu, swine flu of the 2009. Here is a wonderful picture of swine flu to the actually mind full of evolution of versology. If you send a pig, a swine on a journey, on a vacation, maybe there will be cat flu, a bear flu, a dog flu as the result of this vacation of swine. It was discussed within WHO new serotype, uh, seasonal flu serotype H1 and 2. Last week we received one scientific article for review 
doing about H2 and 3 uh, strain. Uh, and we thought that it was a misprint because we know that it's H3 and 2, H2 and 3, and this is H3 and 2. So we can see different combinations, like in the Netherlands. Uh, very long uh, uh, row of different sartans, different symptoms and symptoms of uh, gastrointestinal infection in a child. Flu evolution as a virus does not stop. It is developing. Uh, and uh, uh, there are some unbiased, objective, and uh, notional subjective factors which might impact the situation, like vaccine prophylaxis, unextended monitoring using state-of-the-art technologies and methods. There is another example of what we have been discussing, uh, and it's very important. Presently, actually, it's the end of June. It's uh, off-season for this hemisphere for flu, but we can translate the situation for us. Global scientists in oncology convened here in St. Petersburg and actually within the nearest uh, 24 hours they go back to their respective places, homelands. So one flight by New York, 500 people, seasonal flu, uh, 10 people on board the ship. American guys were great. Uh, they uh, had taken precaution measures. They isolated the plane. But this example showed like everything was OK when the uh, plane took off and the plane landed uh, 14 hours later. It's a pandem pandemonium, uh, pandemia. Uh, so that happens like that. In flu virology, we know segmented genomes, uh, age segments, assertion, combination, and so on. But that alone is not sufficient to explain what we so in 20th century with three pandemias, what we experienced twice yearly when WHO says that we should change the strains of the vaccines recently around the world and our country, there is a transition from three valency to four valency vaccines. I'll show you tables and the huge work of dozens of thousand scientists around the world, uh, world in the system of WHO monitoring. And here are the representatives of one of the lead, uh, top global centers is dealing with that issue. Recently, D-type uh, flu virus, we are come to have A, B, and C, C just in the textbook, and there is D-type uh, uh, potential pandemic. Uh, in animals in Europe, it was detected. This is a basic set of 10 uh, proteins of classical virus, flu viruses. Some others are added up to this list. Uh, this is my favorite slide. We're shifting to vaccine and vaccine prophylaxis. Here is my favorite word is in due time, due time. And this is very challenging. It's a big problem. Uh, healthcare has been developing, of course. Uh, people are against vaccination because they think that might be they, maybe they will not fall ill. But by the fall in September, we'll say, guys, we have got fabulous Russian vaccines and international ones. You should be inoculated. People say, no, we'll not fall ill. Then in December, January, they'll come along very sick and uh, ask for a pill. We'll say we don't have pills. You should have get vaccination when we told us. They say, okay, yes, next fall we'll come along to you. There we go time after time again in, in vicious circles. And despite the vaccine, new uh, flu viruses come along. This is very complex slide of presentation about vaccines. Anti-flu vaccines is the only pathogen whereby we uh, imply very four, four very different vaccines, four groups. One for annual prophylaxis, another uh, pre-pandemic vaccines to get prepared for potential pandemia. Uh, strains are identified which are pandemically actual, but uh, there is no way of knowing which strain will evoke pandemia. Very simple example, uh, swine flu to 9,009. Everybody thought it would be bird flu. Everybody was uh, uh, getting prepared for that. And uh, WHO was prepared for that with vaccines. And then uh, it's uh, triple recent turn, swine grip. Nobody was prepared for that. Pandemic vaccines, God forbid us from seeing those ones, these vaccines, which will be ready by the end of the second wave. Again. 
against the strain which will evoke pandemia. First one, veterinary vaccines for massive prophylaxis of flu in animals. And this is very interesting aspect of evolution of virusology. In point of fact, we have got uh, flu virus which can uh, actively uh, multiply in humans and in animals, especially swine and birds. And we have got complex system of joint evolution or artificial evolution, if you want. If we apply some of the vaccines, uh, uh, phase out some variants, others come along. What's to be done in this situation? There is no way of knowing. We have to take on board some entirely novel things, and we don't know what to start from even for that matter. Another interesting implication. We are talking about the efficacy and safety of anti-flu vaccine. We all know it, but there is something else to this issue. Uh, clinical trials, as we know, uh, clinical trials of many vaccines, especially phase one, phase two, young adult, uh, young healthy adults, uh, efficacy is 99%. It's not for the risk group. And as to the evolutional uh, virusology, uh, it's uh, across immunity. That is one of the major explanations of the situation we observe. No virus for the northern hemisphere of the season 2019-2020 strain to Kansas. There will be vaccines by September. There will be inoculation campaigns. Uh, we'll do a witness raising against this Kansas strain in September next year. We'll upgrade the vaccine strain uh, and, and will exclude uh, this Kansan one because we'll replace it from the joint evolution of humans and animals. A fabulous picture as well. There is this triangle of St. Petersburg, a huge global system is in place now to deal with this problem, but uh, we should be uh, reactively resolving it. We should uh, identify viruses and twice a year to change strains and content. It's not just one strain out of three or four, a strain of four, four valency vaccines, but two out of three or four are undergoing great changes. The situation is getting sharper and sharper. It's deteriorating. Uh, just by an example, February, March, this year. That time everybody was convened in Beijing in a WHO meeting uh, when they announced which strains will be recommended for different countries and for Russian Federation for next season. There is the asterisk showing uh, according to HWO uh, actually uh, there is a new strain which nobody expected. They want another month to validate this data and to make final decisions from the epidemiological standpoint. This is great from the standpoint of applied health care and vaccine manufacturers. It's very bad because this month shifts the beginning of vaccination company from September to October or maybe later on if there are some problems with standards or production of the strains that could be shifted to November. Many agree with uh, that we have bad situation with flu vaccination and if on top of everything will tell people that no vaccine will come along only by December. This is not good altogether. Uh, that's about evolutional flu virusology. Sometimes just new viruses uh, viral that come along. Our colleagues from the International Federation of Vaccine Manufacturers prepared this slide. You can see that one stage, epidemiolo epidemiological stages, when we look at the strains circulated, when WHO experts are selecting different strains that that's only one chunk of the work. Second half, uh, very poetic work beginning from the second uh, half of February to find the regions, chemical agents to optimize the production because no strain means no biological object. And vaccine with updated strain composition is entirely new uh, biological drug. And at best, actually, it's the time span between two to six months for new strains to put them in production. And we discussed that in the previous section as, session as well. We discussed oncovirus. Uh, and can you imagine how many dozen year, uh, dozen years development of new vaccine takes? And here, manufacturers will have to do it real fast within two or three months. Or else, you know, I mean, the aftermath will be very grim. 
This is the journal, and uh, there was the publication in the journal. Colleagues from the Flu uh, Institute suggested the title of this article. There is a very complex picture, uh, which even better illustrates that global system, that plethora of developers, manufacturers, scientists who uh, every minute, every step of the way are making their contributions so that twice yearly will update the strain composition. Uh, for it to be adequate. You cannot name any other situation whereby the mankind could get united just like that. In order to uh, combat uh, flu every step of the way, to identify vir virulia, uh, to sequence them, to make decisions, sometimes not very uh, good and successful when it comes to strain content and to develop those vaccines. These are the materials for of WHO, not for seasonal vaccinations, but uh, from pandemic situations. This is all H5 uh, uh, flu virus, and this is one of the options of uh, manufactured strains done over 15 years, which could be used to, to be prepared for pre-pandemic uh, vaccines. Uh, all those lines, each one of those lines, that was the Resartan. It was assorted. Uh, genetic antigen immunology was studied. Clin small clinical trials were made, which uh, uh, demonstrated that this strain could be used as a vaccine to create pre-pandemic uh, substances or in case of pandemic it can work as well there is something else to the capacity of production having said that unfortunately nowadays 95 percent of production capacities are concentrated in three regions and uh, it's a very unevil distribution between the population of planet earth so to put it. it's not that just half the planet cannot get access to those vaccines but also active work on monitoring and identifying strains is not done elsewhere in the world. I'll mention one of the directions which was very in several years from back from now, but now it's subsiding, unfortunately. It's the development of universal flu vaccines is five or seven years back from now. Everything was on the upswing. We were top of the hill. We were enthusiastic of coming up, about coming up with one fit for all uh, vaccine, but now it's the enhanced uh, cross activity of different vaccines and maybe yeah, we will not have to uh, update and replace vaccine strains on an annual basis, but uh, actually it's not done, and practically those vaccines are not applied Yes, In another very fascinating direction, it's original antigenic scene. There are lots of publications about it. And this is about evolutionary uh, viral zoology. Uh, so uh, the immune system of human beings can form immune response differently depending on uh, the first contact with the first uh, uh, viral strain. There is uh, uh, some strain. There are some strains of gene antigens which are very close. It's cross effect, and there are some strains if it's the first immunology, if first inoculation later on, it will be very difficult to make uh, uh, the cross-immune response on those people. That is a hypothesis, but this is one of the applied directions, maybe through the joint endeavor, we should work about it and different aspects of evolution of virology will make us move forward by big strides. What we do in our institute with our peers and partners, different recombinant DNA uh, vaccines and immunomodulators and very interesting projects on rat systems. And by way of conclusion, there is on how one health concept which was taken on board by WHO. We should extend it because science is one for all one for all of us. Uh, the groundbreaking technologies are related to interdisciplinary problems. Uh, to use slang words, I can see uh, uh, through the flu example that there is some natural or artificial evolution, and it's not always when we select the vaccine. We are forward thinking uh, a few steps down the road, a few years down the road, where we will be if we reverse the strains of vaccines cardinally. And when we use pre-pandemic vaccines to form the immune uh, substrator among the population. Thank you very much. That's it.
Thank you very much indeed, Yuri Mikhailovich. Are there any questions for the speaker? Uh, go ahead, use the mic. I have a question. Uh, what was the situation this year with a delayed guideline on H3 component, which, as you see, brings about lots of production-related problems? Uh, what's your take on it? Uh, which are potential technology technologies to be taken on board in order to speed up the production of anti-mucus vaccines? Uh, so that in situations like the one this year to feel much safer. Unfortunately, the current technologies uh, of the second and third uh, generation subunit and uh, split uh, is not ideal. And the system, the way it evolved throughout several decades, it's in place. In February, we obtained the recommendation, the guideline for our country. Then by the end of August, beginning of September, we'll have it. Uh, jointly with the experts from WHO, uh, we're going back and forth with the discussing, we can uh, uh, just uh, reduce a couple of weeks of work logistically when we are working on the strains and nothing more, nothing else. And those deadlines are good when everything is okay. And when there are H3 and 2 uh, strains uh, are just very um, uh, small in their amounts and there is low activity and so on, it's different. If God forbid us from defreezing the container with the materials and the standard uh, serum uh, arrives in liquid form instead of being dry, you'll have to order no one and to wait for a couple more weeks for it to arrive. Uh, we as uh, academia and as developers and manufacturers think that it's very straightforward way out of the situation. Uh, sit down around the one and the same table and discuss things. Unfortunately, as to the end of February, that strain WHO announced was in the least and we should have said, okay, guys, there are 10 uh, strains. Let's take a risk and start working with them, just by way of an example. That's the way it is now. Do we have any news about the new approach on tobacco plants based on the Russian scientist model? They are producing now in three, four weeks at, at the buyer. Okay, uh, what I can say is that uh, one of the problems with integrating new types of influenza vaccines into the system is that the system already exists for uh, viruses that are uh, produced with uh, chicken embryos. We have seen a similar situation a few years ago with the um, protein science company based in the U.S. They use a baculovirus insect cell system. No, I'm talking about the tobacco. Yeah, yeah, tobacco. Yeah, I know. The uh, Moscow State University has a, has a similar project research. What I want to say is that these things which are in development, they, do not, uh, they are very poorly compatible with the current system. What we should see is from those people, from developers, we should see data not from their studies, but from uh, like you know pilot experiments. For example, this September, WHO maybe will get a new strain, and then we ask them to show us if they can do that within this time frame. Because if you work in a lab, everything is good, and you think that you can do it in 28 days, it does not mean that you will be able to do this in 28 days. Also, again, uh, I've mentioned the protein science uh, vaccine because theoretically their vaccine, which is insect cell produced, was, uh, could be produced in a similar time frame. But I can tell you that they had real challenges to actually supply this vaccine to the US market within similar time frame. So again, theoretical things that this vaccine can be produced rapidly, this is really good. But then this theoretical thing should be put into practical use, try it for a couple of seasons, try to do, you know, with, with, the, with the strains, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Any questions more? What uh, shall we expect this year? Which strain we are trying to resolve this problem every year? We upload every year 
that we have vaccinated 70% of population and if nobody gets ill, aside for kids uh, or uh, older people, we uh, are lucky that we get the vaccine. But if people get ill, what to expect of next year? What should be done? The main group of population are children and older people who have practically no immunity. How to guess and protect these groups of population better? What to expect is uh, absolutely unpredictable. We all hope for the best, that the strains will remain the same. We hope. But I'll tell you a story. In February, many manufacturers and developers, 99% of them, thought that H1N1 will remain Michigan. And uh, there were rumors going on that some people started stocking this uh, vaccine because nothing uh, uh, they thought would be changed, but they changed it. And there is an opinion that there was no scientific substantiation and they delayed uh, H3N2 by one month. We do not know what WHO will invent in September, moreover in February. As for vaccination of the population, there's a very good situation in the US. Universal vaccination for human beings starting from six months of age. As for older population, there are high dose vaccines, there are adjuvant vaccines, and uh, Russian manufacturers are also thinking this way. Hopefully, in the near future, we'll have more and more of such vaccines. There's one thing more. When swine flu was uh, considered back in 2009, there were very interesting meta-analysis, systemic reviews, etc. There was a publication about a group of uh, older people in either US or Canada who in the course of 10 years have been vaccinated uh, every year. And that was uh, key, every year of vaccination. So uh, not antibodies, but the components of the cellular immune system that neutralize the H5N1, though they've never contacted with this H5N1. The public health care position is let's uh, maintain the level of vaccination as for measles and rubella. Some universal approach is certainly uh, highly reasonable, but if we protect our population 50%, meaning that we don't guess at all, but 50%. After vaccination, clinical symptoms um, are going down, so this vaccination may be considered successful, right? We have uh, the um, assessment of efficacy of vaccine prevention. We have to understand that we can't uh, repeat clinical trials uh, in practice. But together with WHO there and their experts, we have a large working group and uh, it is working not for the first year. We think of how to come out of the situation with adequate or inadequate uh, evaluation of anti-flu vaccines. And the basic uh, thesis is the efficacy of flu prevention from the point of view of preventing only lab-confirmed uh, flu infection is not adequate. There are lots of additional benefits and there are interesting figures coming up on stage, plus 10 percent of protection from uh, lethal outcome, never mind the uh, cause. So 50% uh, forecast and 50% protected from flu is great, but it doesn't reflect the overall positive uh, trend that actually uh, exists.